So water wheel makes a full rotation every 13 seconds. The radius of the wheel is 7.5 feet, and the bottom of the wheel is 2 feet above the surface of the water. Guys, time to listen. We're starting. Point on the wheel starts at the 3 o'clock position and turns counterclockwise. Okay, so last time we talked about these first two. Function f gives the vertical height of the point above the horizontal diameter. Is that the input or the output of f? What it gives? Input or output? Omar wants output, agree? What a function gives is its output. Okay, so the vertical height above the horizontal diameter is the output in radius lengths. As a function of, okay, Justin, as a function of what? Nope, as a function of, I was just reading, as a function of the measure of the angle swept by the point. And is that the input or the output, Justin? That's the input. Okay, so if we've got output of vertical height in radius lengths and input of angle measure, what is that? Anna. So that should, that should ring a big bell in your head. Oh, the input is the angle swept counterclockwise from 3 o'clock. And the output is the vertical height above the horizontal diameter and radius lengths. You should all just be like, oh, I know exactly what that is. We've been working on it for two weeks. That's just sine theta. That's exactly what sine theta is. People that understand sine theta are the ones that understand what the input and the output of that relationship is. That, those are the people who, who get sine theta. You understand that the input is the angle swept counterclockwise from 3 o'clock. And the output is the vertical distance in radius lengths. Okay, so this one now gives the vertical height in feet as a function of the measure of the angle swept by the point. So what is the input into this one? What's the input? Jaden, what's the input into this function? What quantity? What's that? Which is what quantity? Measure of the angle? Maybe radians, could be degrees. Which angle? Measure of which angle? Better know which angle it is. So given a circle, we can define 100 different types of angles. Which angle is it? Taz. That's the name of it. What angle is the angle that we've been talking about for the last three weeks, Fuda? Swept counterclockwise from the 3 o'clock position. Okay? And so we want the output now to be the vertical height in feet. We want the vertical height in feet. How are we going to get the vertical foot height in feet this time? Morgan. Okay, so what will the rule be? Right. So here's how we can so here's how we can think about sine theta. What's the maximum value sine theta could be? If it's the number of radius lengths above the vertical diameter, what's the maximum we can get? One. So most of the time it's gonna be what kind of value? If the maximum is one. Yeah, so like a fraction of one. And so the way to think of sine is fraction of a radius. We get numbers like 0 0.2, 0 0.75, 0 0.92. And those numbers are really, what they're talking about is, if, if those are in radius lengths, then it's really like what fraction of the radius length. And so if our radius is 7.5 feet, then this calculation is taking that fraction of 7.5. Should make sense, right? It's taking that fraction of the radius length times 7.5 to give us how many feet we are above. All right, so now here's, that was what we did last time. All right, so now we want a function h that gives the vertical height in feet. Let's just stop right there. If we want the vertical height in feet, what in general will be the structure of our h function if it's going to give us vertical height in feet? Alex. We're going to have the pumping 
Vertical? Vertical height in feet. So if we knew that much, then what, what do we know about our rule for H? Sign. Anything else? It's in feet. Will that will sign alone give us feet? Radius lengths. Okay. Or fraction of a radius. How would we get feet? Right. I should say not five I not five inches. Let's try that again. There we go. Okay. So we know that much. If it's gonna give us if we want feet, vertical height in feet, then we know it's gonna be seven point five sine of something. Now what's our input now? Of the H function. Says time elapsed, right? As a function of time elapsed. So this thing, what is this thing called that's going to be in the parentheses for sign? What's that called? Argument. And what quantity does the argument represent? Do you remember what quantity is the argument? What quantity does the argument represent? Patrick. So this thing is going to be the radians per second is the argument for sine. Shola, agree with that? Radians per second? Walter is nodding. Oh no, you don't you disagree. You think it's angle measure. Tim, what do you think? So the argument of sine, what quantity will it be? Angle measure? Yeah, so, this, so saying it's the argument of sine is really saying it's the same thing as the input of sine. Right? And we know what the input of sine is. What is the input of sine? Angle measure, so counterclockwise from 3 o'clock. Okay, so this whole thing in parentheses is going to be our angle measure. But we need it as a function of t, right? Because this function h, the input is t. So we, get, we need some expression with t's in here. It's going to have t's in there. Okay, and so from last time, we had things like this. We had a, a, a coefficient times t. On Tuesday, we knew what that number was. It was we had two radians per second, or 9.7 radians per second. But now we're writing the formula from scratch. We don't know what that multiplier is. But that argument, bt, is the angle swept counterclockwise from the 3 o'clock position, so it's theta. So now our, to write this function h means figuring out what b is. Writing this function h means figuring out what the value of b is. So what information do we have to get that? 13 seconds. What is that? So is 13 seconds, is that a theta, b, or t? It's a specific input t. Specifically, the what interval of input that gives us a full cycle of output, which is called what? Period. period. 13 seconds is the period. So when t is 13, so when, that, when t is 13, we have one full period, then what does the argument need to reach? The argument needs to reach 2 pi, and this will allow us to solve for b. So we got 2 pi equals b times the period. And then that coefficient of b then, or that, that coefficient b will be 2 pi over 13. Why? Because when time hits 13, we need that angle to hit 2 pi, because we're talking about one full cycle, or one full rotation. 
So we can come back here, and now we've got our h function by substituting in that value of b to pi over 13. Okay, now, so now we want j. So that was our h function. Give the input is time. And the output is uh, vertical height in feet. So now the j function. So what I want you to do is, so get a partner. I want you to... Based on what 4 is saying, determine if deter, determine what the input quantity is and what the output quantity is and see if you can come up with a formula for J. So get a partner, determine the input quantity, determine the output quantity, see if you can come up with a formula for J. Go. Everybody's working on this. So what you need to do is determine what's the difference between J and H. What's the difference between number four and number three? Okay, what is the primary distinction between number three and number four? What's the primary distinction? Jared. Yep, Jared S. Okay. So, but everything else is the same. So our, we still have the same time input, but now J want it's go. It's supposed to output the vertical height above the water instead of the vertical height above what? H did the horizontal diameter of the wheel, right? So now J, we want it to be the vertical above the vertical height of the water. So what I saw last of you put was, started with your H function. And then since the bottom of the wheel is two feet above the surface of the water, we're going to add two. And that will, that will get it. Okay, so let's analyze that. Let's take a look at what's happening with that. So what? let's just look back at our h function here. So this in red. What are the minimum and maximum values of the h function? So how, when we're measuring that height above the horizontal diameter, what's the minimum value we're going to get in feet 
from the horizontal diameter? What would we get? I heard negative 7.5. For the minimum for the h function. Christian, you agree with that? Negative 7.5? Yeah? Yeah. So it's going to be negative 7 point, or 7.5 feet below the horizontal diameter. That's, that's going to be the lowest it can get. And what about the highest? Positive 7.5. Okay, for the j function... If we want the bottom of the wheel to be two feet above the surface of the water, what is our minimum and maximum values going to be for that, Nadine? So if we want, so for J, we need it, the bottom of the wheel to be two feet above the surface. So what will our minimum and maximum values be? Was it? Okay, so let's think about this again. We want the bottom of the wheel to be two feet above the surface of the water. What? Okay, so one more time. We want the bottom of the wheel, think about it, to be two feet above the surface of the water, and J is giving us what the height of the point above the surface of the water. So what's the minimum value of J going to be? So can you imagine the wheel? Here's the, if this desk is the surface of the water, then where's the bottom of the wheel? Two feet above. So here's the bottom of the wheel, and then our function j is measuring the height of the point above the water. So what's the minimum value of j? So is this negative two relative to the water or positive two? Positive. positive. Positive, right? The height above the water. So this is giving us the minimum. If it's two feet above the water, it's giving us the minimum of J, how low it gets. And then what's going to be the highest? How can we figure out what the highest point is going to be of J? Add what? Add two? Like two feet? Two radiuses. Two 7.5s, right? So the, the, the first 7.5 will be to the midline, the horizontal diameter, and then another one. So what do we get when we do that? Adding it to 2. 17. So this wheel, the point on the wheel above the water is going to be from 2 feet to 17 feet above. So now let's, let's, talk, let's look at this. How do we do? So we, our, before our minimum was negative 7.5 and 7.5, and so we're going to shift that wheel up 2 units. Is that going to give us our desired result? We shift that thing up two units. Where's the bottom of the wheel? Underwater or above the water? If we shift it up two units, H. It's underwater still, right? Because if we had that wheel before, we were doing this, right? And the, the minimum was negative 7.5. We're going to add 2. If we add 2, it's going to move the wheel up this much. That's a really bad circle. It's just going to move the circle up 2. And then now that bottom of that wheel is going to be still negative 5.5, meaning that the bottom of the wheel is negative 5.5. But we need it to be 2 feet above the surface of the water. So how much do we need to move it up? Yeah, so we need that negative 7.5 to become 2, and we need that 7.5 to become 17. So you can't just tack on a 2. That 2 is the minimum. That 2 is the new minimum of the function. So how much do we have to add? We need to add whatever we need to add to negative 7.5 to get to 2. 9.5. Does it make sense that you can't just add two? Because it it's telling us the bottom of the wheel is two, so we got to get we got to get the bottom of the wheel first up to the surface. That's seven point five, and then another two. That's our nine point five, right? So it's like think about the surface of the water being in the middle of the wheel. 
First up a radius, 7.5, then up another 2, or 9.5. This is, this is scores of students who missed this, right? So they just grab that 2 and just add it to the function. It's not right. It's not right. So now let's graph it. So let's rewrite the formula. We said it's going to be uh, 7.5 times sine of 2 pi divided by 13 times t plus 9.5. So let's talk about some, we got some new terms to talk about here. So when we sketch these sine and cosine functions, we have what's called the max, the min, the midline, the amplitude, and we talked about last time the period. So the max and the min, is that talking about output or input? Walter, output. output. What is our maximum output going to be? Or maybe we'll start with the minimum. What's the minimum output going to be? If we did it right, yeah, if we did it right, we said the bottom of that wheel is two feet above the water, so that, that's going to be the height. So then what would the maximum value be? How much? That was at 17 that we came up with. All right, so where's the midline of this curve? So our max is going to be at 17. All right, so which is right at the top, right at that gray bar. Okay, so I put 17 right along there, so I don't have to draw it. But the minimum will be 2. There's the minimum, okay. Maximum right on that gray bar there. What about the midline? So the midline is a line, so we need y equals. Where's going to be the midline of this graph? That would be like the 3 o'clock and the 9 o'clock position of the wheel. How high is it? 9.5. 2 plus the radius. What's the midline of just sine? What's the midline of just the sine function? Jared. Just our sine function. Okay, but in, in the when we graph the, the wave, where's the midline? Y equals what? Zero. So notice here, for this part right here, the midline would be zero. And look, we add 9.5. So what does that do? That just takes that zero midline and just moves it up 9.5. So here's your midline right here. Whatever you add or subtract to your sine function, that's your midline. Okay. <laughs> the amplitude then is the distance from the midline in the wave. It's the distance in the wave from the midline to the max or from the midline down to the min. So what's that going to be? And what does that represent in the first wheel, Jaden? The 7.5. What? Yeah. Okay, so our midline was y equals 9.5. And so this right here, is called the amplitude. It's the distance from the midline up to the top of the wave and down to the bottom. And it's the same as, if we have circular motion, what's it the same as in the circle? The radius. So why do we have a new name for it? Because the curve we're about to sketch doesn't have a radius. It doesn't have a radius, right? It's not, it's not, this curve itself is not a circle. So in that curve, that height, that height from the midline up to the top of it is the amplitude, and it's, it rep, it's rep, representing you know, the radius of the circle. Okay? But, so amplitude is referring to this curve we're about to sketch, that distance from the midline up to the top. What's our period? 
It said 13 seconds to get all the way around. So how are we going to chunk up 13 to help us sketch this graph? This is what I did last night because I had a number that wouldn't be whole. When I did it, I just took, I put 13 on the very end, and then for the next dash, I put 13 times 3 fourths and 13 times a half. Okay, cool. So let's do that last one first. So here's 13. So on the midline, so we can, here's 13. On the midline, we can show 13 seconds right here. And so he said he'd take three fourths of it, take one half of it, and take one fourth of it. So we're breaking 13 up into what? Four equal sections. We know that's one cycle of these cosine and sine graphs are broken up into four equal sections. So we're going to do 13 over 4, which is? 3.25, I think. Someone have a question? Yeah, Alex. Uh, I guess I'm just slightly confused about how we go about, uh, like in the first scenario when the wheel was at its normal position, uh, what do we have as being like zero? Because when you move it like up to feet, uh -huh. now we're assuming that the water values are zero, right? Right. On the y axis. So when the wheels actually not move, What's our zero? Is it the diameter of the wheel, or is it still the water? You know what I mean? um, so before, all we, so all we were referencing was the horizontal diameter of the wheel. So the water didn't mean it. The fact that the water was down here didn't mean anything, because that first function was getting us horizontal distance, vertical distance above the horizontal diameter. So that for sine, that's the reference the horizontal diameter. But now if we need this to be 0, then we're saying the minimum is 2, and the maximum is going to be 2 plus 2 radius, 17. Oh, okay, so the wheel wasn't moved when we changed what the reference point was. That's right. Okay. Yeah, the new reference point now is the water instead of the horizontal diameter. And if the water is the reference point, if that's our y equals 0, we need the height above the water, then that's got to be positive 2, that's got to be positive 17, and now that's got to be, that's our midline, which will be 9.5. So, all right, so now we're splitting up our period into four equal chunks. We've got 3.25, we can divide in half, and we get 6.5, and then we can do 3 quarters of 13. Or you could just add these two, right? A half plus a quarter. And then that's 9.75. And then we just look at the fact that it's sine. So now we've got our max and our min and our midline, and we've got the four parts of the for, the, for one cycle. We've got the split it up into four. So sine, the vertical distance above the water at the three o'clock position, is it, started, is it the min, the midline, or the max? Midline. And then Hamid, from there, in the first quarter turn, where does that point go for vertical distance? Min, midline, or max? To the max. This is our sign. So now we're sketching the sine curve, right? And then when it gets to pi, the angle is pi, or 6.5 seconds, back to the midline. When the angle is 3 pi over 2, or the time is 9.75 seconds, we're at the bottom of the wheel. And then when it reaches back to full rotation, it's there. Lines? Line, 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 like this? Yeah. Lines? No, no, yeah. no. And so in this first part, the height increases. The rate, does the rate increase or decrease? The rate is, Austin, increasing or decreasing rate? Decreasing. Okay, next part. The height decreases. Is the rate, does the rate increase or decrease? Brian? Increase. What's that? Increase. Increasing rate. Agree with that? Increasing rate. Negative changes. Getting more or less negative? More negative. Is that increasing or decreasing rate? the decreasing rate. Those changes are getting, the changes are getting longer, but they're negative changes, getting more negative. So that's de still a decreasing rate of change. Okay, next thing. 
Height is decreasing down to 2. Is the rate increasing or decreasing? From here to here. The height decreases. What about the rate? Does the rate increase or decrease? This is an increasing rate. The rate of change is negative, but it's getting less negative. That's an increasing rate. And then the height increases back up to 9.5. Is that increasing or decreasing rate? There. Increasing rate. Increasing rate. Changes are getting more positive. All right, let's see how we did. I'm going to turn it on. Okay, so we got it. And so then after 13 seconds, it just repeats all the same outputs again, right? Because it's going to go around another circle for the next 13 seconds. So every 13 seconds, it repeats the same outputs. <coughs> so when you, we're going to do in the next week, week and a half, we're going to be sketching these. Do it without your calculator. Make sure you understand. If you do without, you can only use your calculator to check in the end. Okay. So do do what we did here. All right. Any questions on that example? Yeah, Alex. Uh, can you work with, uh, I guess, sine and cosine waves without using a circle? Because everything that we're using so far is based on the circle. Based on the circle. That's right. So there are things. Yes, there are other um, types of repeated motion, repeated, uh, uh, repeating quantities that can be modeled with sine and cosine, like a pendulum, or like something like a buoy in the water going bobbing up and down. Okay? So, yeah, so there are other things that are not circular, which we can apply sine and cosine to. But the, the, the origin of sine and cosine is from circular motion. Okay. Any other questions? All right, so I want you to open up the page. Investigation, we need to work a little bit here. Investigation six. Page 279, number four. 279, number four. So just read the setup, and then you're going to skip. I'm going to give you the I'm going to give you the uh, animation to show you what's going on, and then you're going to just start with C. You're going to do C, D, and E. Cat, dog, elephant. Okay. So just get read, orient yourself to the setup, and I will get you a picture here. So here's what we got. We got uh, the pedal, that's the, what I'm showing on the left, and then the valve on the tire I'm showing on the right. And so the setup is that that's not what I wanted. Okay, so here's the deal. So for every one radian that the pedal rotates, the valve is going to rotate four radians. And I'm showing that scenario right there. For one, I'm showing one radian rotation for the pedal and the resulting four radians of rotation for the tire valve. So that's the scenario. And so this is what that looks like. What, Jaden? Yeah, right, right. This would be a high gear. That's exactly right. OK. 
Okay, so I want you to, you got the setup. I want you to work on part C as in cat, D as in dog, E as in elephant. C, D, and E. Where is it? So for the function they're talking about in part C, what's the input and output that they want for the function in part C? Corey, did you get that? What's the input and what's the output what they want in part C? Did you say theta? Yeah. Okay. And what, so what angle measure is that? No theta. So is theta talking, what is it talking about? The pedal or the tire valve? pedal. And then what do they want for the output of F? Let's go Anna, take over from there. So what do they want for the output of F? What quantity do they want? I'm just actually, actually kind of what is the question asking for? What, what output do they want the output of F to be? Just read the question. It's just in the question. So it's, it's telling you what output they want. Right. In what? In radius lengths. And so that's why you concluded it was? Cosine. So they want the input to be the pedal angle and the output to be the horizontal distance of that pedal from the vertical diameter. Okay, and then they want you to find the the valve angle measure in terms of the pedal angle measure. So we said given one radian of pedal angle measure, we get four radians of tire valve. So what about if I go pi over two? If I do pi over 2 for the pedal, what am I going to get for the tire valve? Hamid. So I'm going to do pi over 2. I'm going to do a quarter circle for the pedal. What am I going to get for the tire valve? What's that? Four radians. So I'm going to rotate the pedal, pi over 2 radians. How far will the tire valve rotate? 2 pi. Two pi. That's right. And so given any angle measure, theta, how much will the valve angle rotate? This, Jared. 4 times theta. That tire valve is spinning it. A rate four times as fast as the as the uh, pedal, 
right? So whatever angle you get for the pedal, you're going to get four times that for the, for the uh, tire valve. Okay, so now in part E, the output of E, is the output of E related to the tire valve or the pedal? What output do they want for the G function in part E? What output do they want? Nina? The tire valve. But what output quantity about the tire valve? What about its position? Mm, that's not the output of G. The output of G, what do they want for the output of G? In? Okay, so we want the horizontal position in radius lengths. And ding, 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 the light goes off in your head. What is that? What are we going to be using to get horizontal distance in radius lengths? Diana? It's going to be cosine. Okay, so if this thing is going to be the horizontal position of the tire valve, then what angle needs to go into cosine? If the output of cosine is going to be about the tire valve, then what angle, that angle needs to be, which one, the tire valve or the pedal? This thing's going to spit out something about the tire valve, then what about the angle that we're putting into cosine, the argument? Tire valve angle, right? So if we put the tire valve angle into cosine, then it's going to give us the tire valve horizontal distance. So the argument has to be the tire valve angle measure, which we know what it is. What is it? That's our four theta. Where theta was our original pedal angle. So, so we're, we're getting the position of the tire valve as a function of how much uh, the, the, the angle measure of the pedal, the angle measure of the pedal. So the question is, what is this graph going to look like? And so we can easily come up with that if we just understand what we're looking at here. So first of all, we're going to graph the pedal, this f function, the f function. Okay, so the f function over here on the left is going to be the pedal angle. Where's that going to start? The min, the midline, or the max? Let's see, Morgan. So I'm going to. I want to graph the horizontal distance to the right of the vertical diameter of the pedal, starting at a pedal angle of zero. Is that going to start at the min, the midline, or the max? The max. The max. Because right now we're at the maximum distance to the right. And then in that first quarter circle, it's going to go to where? From the max to... To the midline, because when we get to the top of that first circle, now the horizontal distance is zero, right? Horizontal distance is zero. Second quadrant to the min, because now it's the minimum horizontal distance or the maximum negative, right? Bottom of the circle, horizontal distance is zero, and back to the top. Okay. So, so we can just, I'll just continue it there. And so there's our graph for the, for the F function, which is our basic cosine graph. So the question is now over here, we're going to graph, you can barely see, I've, I've put the gray graph there as the same as the F graph. We want to compare that to what G is going to be. So given that that wheel is spinning four times as fast, that we, we get four times the angle, when I increase this angle from 0 to 2 pi, what is, go what is G going to graph? How, what's that going to look like? Jonathan, what do you think? So now I'm going to graph over here on the right, I'm going to graph the G function along with the F function. And so if that wheel is spinning four times as fast for every 
you know, the, the angle swept out is always four times as much as the pedal, then what will the resulting graph of G be? What's that? Okay. So the max and min would be different? Okay, what do you think about that, Brooke? Will the max and min be, be different from G and H? Or G and F? It should be the same. So what will be different? Okay, so can you explain what you think the G graph will look like compared to the F graph? A lot closer together. Patrick? Okay. Right, so how much input of theta will it take to get a full cycle of the, of the wheel? How much input of theta do we need to go through to get a full cycle of the wheel? One quarter of a circle or pi over 2, right? So that's the period. So the period will be pi over 2. So by the time we've only done one quarter of a circle of the... Oh, I thought I had it on. Let's see here. By the time we've done one quarter of a circle of the pedal, we've already got a full rotation of the tire. So it's going to go, let's go through the whole cycle. So what you all, many of you were saying was correct. It's going to be scrunched together so that by the time we reach 2 pi, how many full cycles have we done? Four rotations, so four full cycles of that G function. So by multiplying, in our argument, if we multiply by some number greater than 1, in our argument, does that make the period longer or shorter? The period. Does it make the, the period longer or shorter when we multiply in our argument by some number greater than 1? Same. same period? They have the same period. You still have the same period. Toss. Yeah. So if we multiply by 4, what do we do to the period? We just took the period and made it four times, one fourth as much, right? Or four times shorter. That's right. One fourth as much. Because it's spinning faster, right? It's spinning four times as fast. So all it takes now is a quarter circle, and we get a full cycle. So we've got a shorter period. So multiplying by a number greater than 1 in the argument doesn't make the period four times as long. It makes it one fourth as long. Does that make sense? All right, so next situation, go to number five, on the next, 281, number five, and we're going to take the 12.5 off, so, we're, so h of theta, just cosine theta over two, so just scratch out the 12.5, so page 281, number five. And you can start with A on that one. So read, read what it's saying, and then just start, go A, B, C, D. So we're taking the 12.5 off. Remember that?
Okay, so the first thing they asked about, is, so we got this function. They said the output is the horizontal distance right of the vertical diameter of the tire valve. What would that be in? What unit would that be in with the way that I have H written up there? What unit would that be? Omar. So the way that I have that H function written, what is the units of measure for the horizontal distance right of vertical diameter? Feet? So he says that's feet. Agree with that? Why, why, why are you changing your mind? Okay. So we just have cosine. Yeah, so three zero and one or three zero and one. So the way that I've defined the H function there, it would be radius lengths, because it's cosine. The output output of cosine is horizontal distance right of the vertical diameter in radius lengths. And that's of the tire valve, right? Okay, so the first question they ask you was this argument of cosine, one half theta. What does it represent, Alex? So one half theta. What quantity is that relative to the situation? Okay, it's the argument, but what quantity is it relative to this bike, this, the pedal and the tire? Angle measure. Swept three from three o'clock of you said the valve and why are you saying the valve? Because that uh, H of theta uh, function is for the uh, the tire valve, like the output is for the tire valve. Exactly right. Good. Yeah. So if this cosine is outputting a horizontal distance of the tire valve then that argument into cosine has to be the angle swept by the tire valve. Excellent, okay? But then we know that that's a function of theta, which is our pedal angle. Okay, so we're gonna compare that to uh, the same one we did before, cosine theta. So we know what cosine theta looks like. So here's our Cosine, this is the horizontal distance of the pedal valve in radius length. And so for increasing angle, so that's the pedal valve, not the tire valve, okay? Or the, the pedal, that's the pedal. That blue, blue is always the pedal, okay? That's the F function. So now I'm going to turn on the red function, which is H. So how is the tire valve rotating relative to the pedal? So what's the relationship? How is that one rotating? Compared to how the pedal is rotating. Somebody new. Nadine, so when I ro rotate that pedal, how does the tire valve rotate relative to how I'm ro when I rotate the pedal? Half as much, right? It goes half as much. It goes half as far. So when I turn on this valve graph, so now when I, now when I turn this pedal, this over here in red, it's going to plot our H function or our tire valve. And what's that going to look like? Who's up? Diana. So what do you predict for the, the H function, which is measuring the horizontal distance of the tire valve? What's that? It'll only go up to pi. So you're saying it'll do a full cycle when we get to pi? Half a cycle at pi? So what's our interval of input that gives a full cycle for the pedal? So what? So when we rotate the pedal all the way around, what, what interval of angle is that? What is it? 2 pi. And how far will the tire valve have rotated when I do one full cycle of the pedal? When I do that. So I'm going to go all the way around once. 
how far around will this go if it's spinning half as much? It'll go, right, it'll go half as much. So when I make a full rotation of the pedal, I'm only going to get how much of a cycle of the tire valve? Half of the cycle. So how, how much do I have to turn, turn the pedal to get a full rotation of the tire valve? Cholo, what do you think? How far do I have to turn the pedal to get one full rotation of the tire valve? What's that? I gotta turn it four times. I gotta turn the pedal four times. Is that right? Walter, what do you think? Twice. So therefore, what is the period of the of the tire? Two times two pi. It's gonna take twice as much rotating of that pedal, so two times around to get one time around for the right so by multiplying by a number less than one in the argument what does that do to the period make it shorter or longer longer because that thing is turning slower right so this 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 argument now is turning slower than our input so we need more input we need more input now we need four twice as much input to get one full cycle of output. Okay, so what we're talking about here, so, so far um, in the last couple of days, we talked about how this argument could be a function of time, right? We had like, you know, 2t or 9.7t or 2 pi over 13t. But what we're showing now is that that argument can be a function of another angle. So we've got two angles changing together. We've got the input angle and then the argument angle, which is based on that input angle. So it doesn't have to be time, it could be another angle. So we've got two angles working together here, the input angle and the argument angle. All right, so let's summarize that. Okay, so here we got the, the angle of the pedal and the angle of the tire, which we're saying is a function of, is, re, is comes from the angle of the pedal. So the pedal angle measure comes first. And then based on that, we have the tire valve angle measure. And then based on the tire valve angle measure, we're going to talk about the tire valve's position. All right, so the pedal angle measure is our starting angle, and the tire valve is a function of that. Okay, and so now what's going to get us the, something about the tire valve position? So now we have the tire valve angle measure. What are we going to use to get something about the tire valve position then? Given that, so we have the tire valve angle measure, and we want to locate where the tire valve is. What is that? What do we use? What is that about? He said sine and cosine. Yeah, sine and cosine. Exactly. Sine will give us vertical height of the tire valve. Cosine, horizontal position of the tire valve. So what idea here that we did about a month, six weeks ago, is what we're really talking about? What's, the, what's going on here? What idea of functions is this about? He said composition. Is it composition? Remember, the output of one function becomes the input of another. That's exactly right. So we got the output of this function is tire valve, and we're going to put that into sine or cosine to get tire valve position. Okay, so let's suppose we're talking about sine here. Suppose we're talking about sine. So, which of those three things is the output? Pedal angle measure, tire valve angle measure, or tire valve position? Which is the output? Which of those three things? Position, because it's sine, right? It's sine, that's the vertical height above horizontal diameter. Okay, and then the argument. Which of those remaining two is the argument? <coughs> so here's the deal. If we want that sine to give us the tire valve position, then that argument has to be tire valve angle. 
right? The angle has the angle that goes in is going to correspond to the position of the that thing that we. Have. So that argument has to be has to also be tire valve. This in this case tire valve angle measure. But that is coming from some other angle, which is our input into the function. In this case, the pedal angle measure. So that's that's kind of the just the overall idea of what we're doing. So we're kind of talking about how that argument can be a different angle than our input, a function of. So that argument is a function of our input angle. So let's look at another example. Page 285. Flip over to 285. And we're doing number two. And there's mistakenly a three there. Okay? Do you see that? Number three? Just put an X through that three. That's a mistake. We're doing number two. And there shouldn't be a three there on page 285. So we're back to the bike shop still, still at the bike shop. So read that scenario, number two, put an X through the three. It shouldn't be there. And then I want you to make that table, okay? Make that table at the bottom of page 285. Okay, so what's happening here? They're spinning at the same speed, but what's the difference between the two angles? The tire valve starts behind it. By how much? Pi over 4. And always, always stays behind by pi over 4. So in that table there, so look at halfway down the table, it says, what about at 2 radians? So here's about two radians. How would you express how far the tire ang angle or the tire valve angle has rotated? What's that tire angle? If this is two, how could you express that? What's that? He wants to subtract pi over four from two. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. And so if they're going the same speed, no matter what the angle is, that's right. So, so how could we write the tire valve angle measure in terms of theta? Yeah. Equals, so in terms of theta. It's always what? And is it always pi over 4 behind or ahead? It's always behind, right? So this is means that the, it's lagging behind. That's key. That's key to what we're going to talk about. So that see that that tire valve angle is always lagging behind by pi over four, and therefore it's in that last um, thing I showed you. This is the g function, right? G of theta is theta minus pi over four. So now we want to write t of theta. We want the vertical position above the horizontal diameter in radius lengths of the tire valve. So if it's vertical position, it's going to be which, sine or cosine? Sine. And the argument, is that the argument, is it going to be the pedal angle measure or the tire valve angle measure, the argument? So this is the Vertical distance above the horizontal diameter of the tire valve. So the, the argument, which angle is the argument? Tire valve. And what is our tire valve angle in terms of theta, the pedal angle? 
That's our theta minus pi over 4. Okay, so now what is that graph going to look like? Now you told me that, is it lagging behind or ahead? It's lagging behind. Okay, so I'm going to graph the pedal graph here. Both. So there's our pedal graph for sine, right? This is for sine. So as you, as theta increases, so this is the key. So every, just have your attention for a couple more minutes. As theta increases, we've got the start right here of the pedal cycle and the finish of the pedal cycle at 2 pi, right? So what would it mean for the tire valve cycle to start and end later or after? So here we're coming along. Theta is increasing this way, right? So here's the pedal starting and then later, pi over 4 later, the tire valve is going to start. And then it's gonna, they're going to go through the rotations. And then the pedal's going to end. And then later, or lagging behind, the valve's going to end. <coughs> but they're the same. They're the same. They have the same. Excuse me. Yeah, same period. Okay. So they have the same period. But what's that, the red graph going to look like for the tire valve? Is it going to be... If it's behind, is it going to be shifted over here to the left or going to be shifted over here to the right? So what is behind in the graph? Is that going to be like here, shifted left or shifted right? Look, for increasing angle, the pedal is going to start here. So let me draw it. Here's the pedal. The pedal starts its cycle there, and then ends its cycle there. So for increasing theta, oh no, bummer. So what do we got? H of theta equals sine So for increasing theta, so here, look, so here's the pedal starting its thing, and then later, pi over 4 later, now what? Now the tire valve starts its cycle. And then at 2 pi, the pedal has finished its cycle, and then pi over 4 later, the tire valve has finished its cycle. So if our argument angle is lagging behind or is less than, what does that do to the graph? It's just to the right because later, so if we're increasing angle this way, later comes later for greater angles of theta. So you've got to see that red graph as lagging behind the blue one by pi over 4 because it's to the right. Do you see it? Okay, so again, uh, today's web work will be due tomorrow at noon, and then we'll have a normal assignment for Tuesday.